And I do. Acts chapter number 15. Amen. I want to begin reading uh, verse number 8. If you have it, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Amen. He put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. I want to talk to you um, tonight for a few minutes uh, from a very familiar story in the Bible on this subject. Walls around the well. Walls around. We've got to tear down the walls that are blocking the well. Amen. Amen. One more time, let's lift up our voices and let's pray. God, we love you. I'm grateful for your presence that is in this place. And I'm also grateful, God, for these great saints that are in this place. God, I pray that you would bless them tonight. I pray that you would perfect them. Get them ready, God, for the purpose that you have designed them for, to fulfill. I ask you, God, that you would help me to do a good job. Anoint me, God. There are things uh, in this lesson, God, that, uh, Lord, they may be a little bit difficult to wrap our minds around. It's a very timely word, God, in uh, the state of our country and our world. God, I'm asking you tonight that you would help us, God, to get a grip on this so that our church can be everything, God, that you have purposed us to be. And we all pray this in the beautiful name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. 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 All right. Look up here and smile. Amen. Come on, Sister Rosa. Show me. Show me your teeth. <laughs> hey, are your tooth you know my grandmother was here she take them out and show them everybody amen um, I want you to go around shake a couple people by the hand tell them it's time to tear down the walls it's time to tear down the walls it's time to tear down the
together. I know I've said it dozens of times, and if life continues as it is, it's going to be hundreds of times. A key word in the book of Ephesians is the word together. The whole book is about Jews coming together with the Gentiles, sitting together, praying together, worshiping together. That's what this whole church thing is about. It's about people coming together. Hallelujah. People that probably wouldn't sit together over a meal. Coming together. Good Greek word is the word koinonia. It's the Greek word for fellowship. It's people coming together, visiting with each other, loving each other. People from one side of the tracks, if I can go ahead and just say it like that. Loving people on the other side of the tracks. Coming together under one roof. Enjoying each other's company while we all enjoy the presence of God. Somebody say praise the Lord. Jesus was very much intentional about bringing people together. That's why the scripture said that Jesus must needs go through Samaria when everybody else would have taken the long way around when everybody else would have done everything that they could have possibly done to avoid this mixed race people Jesus said I've got to go I can't avoid the opportunity that has presented itself right in front of me I've got to go to Samaria there's something there, somebody there. There is a need there, and I must needs go through Samaria. Samaritans were a mixed bag. Some have suggested that the Samaritans were uh, those that were left behind um, when Babylon came through and they took out uh, the majority of the Jews. That little small remnant that was left behind intermarried with the heathen. And so, therefore, to the Jews, the Samaritans were, were sub-religious. They were a, a lower form of Israel, if, if I can say it like that. They, because they had connected themselves together. With the Gentiles, they were less than Israelites. They were less than the children of uh, Abraham. While they may still have had roots back to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, they had separated themselves by coming together with the Gentiles. Because of this compromise to the Jews, they had become an inferior people. Samaritans, um, they had a, a different uh, set of Hebrew scriptures. They had a different location for where they worshipped. We'll get into that a little bit more later, perhaps. Amen. And as the story goes, it was noontime at Jacob's well. It was the hottest part of the day and there Jesus was waiting resting while he waited and along comes uh, uh, this Samaritan woman to draw water and Jesus did the unthinkable he struck up a conversation with this woman first of all men did not speak to strange women and already we see him taking that Holy Ghost wrecking ball and crashing through all of their 
cultural prejudices. He's he's crashing through all of their their man-made traditions because he strikes up this conversation with her as if he's known her all his life and like they were good friends. And Jesus, a, reli a quote, religious leader is having a conversation with a Samaritan and a woman. A Samaritan woman. And not only that, but now he is requesting of her some water. And of course, uh, by the Jewish tradition, that would have made him ceremonially unclean. No ordinary Jew would have been caught dead speaking with a Samaritan, let alone a Samaritan woman. But bless God, Jesus wasn't an ordinary Jew. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. And so uh, the woman, uh, the Samaritan woman, she too was shocked at um, him crossing these boundaries, crashing through these barriers, this breach of custom. And she uh, quickly brought up the fact that there was a wall between them. There was a separation, her being a Samaritan and uh, him uh, being a, a Jew. But Jesus refused to allow that barrier to stop him from this opportunity that was before him. And, and notice what Jesus does. Jesus transfers from her focus that is on the wall to focusing on the well. I got to get your attention off of the wall that separates us unto the well, unto the well. And I'm talking to you tonight about this subject, walls around the well. Amen. Uh, and he's the master at this. I mean, Jesus is the boss, you know, at taking uh, these physical realities and and, and giving them this spiritual principle applied to them. And, and, and so there before him is this well. And, and you know the story well. How uh, he, he tells her. He says you know what. Uh, if you would have asked a drink from me. I would have given you a drink and you would have never had to come back to this well and draw again because if you get a drink out of the, the water that I provide, I'm giving out living water and if you're really thirsty, I'll give you something that you will never ever thirst again. And, and so he takes, uh, uh, and again he's the boss at this, he, he takes things that uh, have to do with physical need. And he smashes through them and he applies a spiritual need to that. He opens this door and he shows her that what you really need is not a physical drink. But what you really need is you need some living yeah. water. Yes, yes, yes. Who wouldn't want that? Come on. I mean, here she is. You know, she's she's at the, the heat of the day and she's out roaming around by herself, which, by the way, was very dangerous. For a woman. She's out wandering around by herself. It's the hottest part of the day. She's she's alone. And, and, and she is this way. Brother Mike for a reason. Because she's got a bad rep. Kind of like some folks that you and I know. Made some bad decisions. Yea even some of us in such work. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. So she was an outcast of her society. She had been shunned from her community. And bless God, Jesus knew all of this. He was aware of what she had done. He was aware of her deepest and darkest secrets. You can't hide from Jesus. Hallelujah. He sees when you're sneaking around. Taking a quick puff. The websites. Uh -huh. He sees. Yes, he does. My God. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. But Jesus, knowing all of this, uh -huh. Sister Jackie, did not ignore her. Right. Hallelujah. But neither did he ignore her sin. Yes. 
In fact, he very much addressed her sin. Somebody say praise the Lord. But by addressing her sin, he was letting her know, hey, you're fully known, but you're also fully loved. In other words, I accept you the way that you are. In other words, even coming in the way that you are, you're still welcome in this church. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I'm sure glad to be here tonight. While he accepted me, if you would know about some of those stones that have been covered, you probably wouldn't be so quick to want me here. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Uh, my mama's back there shaking her head, just probably thinking, yeah, I know a little bit too much about it. <laughs> Amen. Probably so. Amen. Let me tell you something. There is no wall that can separate us from that well. I'm talking about that living water. That anybody that is thirsty has an invitation from Jesus Christ that they can come and they can get a drink just like she could. Hallelujah. And it'll change their lives. They'll never thirst again. See, they think that what they need is another puff off of a joint. They think that if they can get just another 12 pack or another case of beer, everything's going to be all right. They think, well, if I can just fall in love, if I can just give me a big old strong hook, he'll provide all. No, 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 my friend. What you long for is a drink of living water. It's not a it's not another relationship. It's not a substance. You're not going to find it in Hollywood, but you'll find it at an altar somebody's. family and they think that their messes that they've made have erected a massive wall that separates them from church so how do we overcome those barriers what do we do bless God we gotta break those walls down hallelujah there's walls in this community my God that have been built up that are separating people yes. from the answer. Amen. Amen. And so this woman, she tried to shift the focus back to the wall, back to the last wall that was erected between them, and it was the wall of worship. And she told Jesus, she said, you Jews say that people can only worship at Jerusalem, but I am a Samaritan, and I, I can't go to Jerusalem to worship, and there is this large wall that is put up that prevents me from worshiping the way that you Jews say that God is only worshiped. And so there again, Jesus had to turn the conversation one more time because she was focused on, uh, on a physical location, a place of worship. But Jesus said it's not about a, a specific place of worship. It is about the nature of worship. And we've got to get people's minds off of the external distractions, the walls that separate people. And we got to get them back to thinking about their heart because it's not in a building that we worship God. We worship Him in spirit and in. Somebody say amen. amen. So we got to tear these walls down and Jesus showed us that walls and, 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 and ideas and prejudices uh, that separate us, they're nothing more than distractions that distract people from getting to the well of life. Hallelujah. He also showed us that our focus should be on the well and not on the walls. Too many of us are focused on the walls. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Walls are built for one of two reasons. To keep somebody out yeah. or to keep somebody in. Right. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. And I want you all to stay in. Yeah. But bless God, I want you to be here because you want to be here. Yeah. Right. We can't keep nobody out. Yeah. So 
We got to tear the walls down and give them access to the well of life. Amen. And so this woman, you know the story. She ran back to town. She began to tell the entire community uh, about how Jesus had told her all about herself. And man, isn't that just like a church service where you come and you feel like the man of God who has prayed and sought the face of God and he gets up there and he preaches about all your, your little secret habits that you're sneaking around doing and, and you feel like he knows all of your business uh, and you run around saying, yeah, somebody's been talking to him about me. She runs back and she says, yeah, he told me everything about myself. He knew all my secrets, all the skeletons in my closet. And, and this provoked a curiosity within the people. And the Bible said that many more believed when they went to Jesus. They wanted to hear him for themselves. And many more believed when they heard his words. In fact, the scripture said that they told the Samaritan woman, she, they, they said, hey, now we believe him for ourselves. Because we've heard him ourselves. We're not just believing you because of what you said, but we believe him because of what we've heard for ourselves. And check this out. It's, man, John is, John's a bomb, the bomb. It's, see, if, if you read the Gospel of John, you'll notice this, this water theme. Jesus is building a, a picture of... Of how he is the living water. He is the well of life. And, and John just in a magnificent way. He just expands on this theme. It's almost like in every chapter there is this theme of water. You, you see him in the early chapters. And, and, and he's at a wedding at Cana. And what does he do? He takes water. And he turns it into, into wine. He's at a celebration. That has run out of, of wine. Yes, yes. Almost kind of like humanity. Life that was supposed to be full of joy and full of celebration. And life has lost its celebration. Yes, come on. Yes, yes. And Jesus said, all you need is a little bit of wine. Something to bring the joy back into your life. Yes. I'm not condoning drinking. Don't misunderstand me. Right, sister. Praise God. What you need is a drink, is what he's saying. He said, if you want a little bit of joy in your life, what you need is a drink. If any man thirst, if anybody wants a drink, Jesus is full of joy, juice. Hallelujah. You bring the joy back into your life. You move on to the next chapter, John chapter number three, and you find Jesus in a dark room with a religious scholar of his day, a Pharisee. Hey, we know you came from God. No man can do the things that you're doing. And Nicodemus is petting on him, trying to politic with him. And Jesus said, you got to be born again of the water. You see this theme just kind of weaving in and out. John is building this picture that, that Jesus is the flow. He is, uh, uh, he is the, the river of living water. If anybody's thirsty, if you want to get the celebration back into your life, uh, what you need is you need to get a little drink of Jesus. And there he is in John chapter number four, the next chapter. And he's at a well and here's a thirsty woman. And Jesus says, hey, I can give you some water that if you drink it, you'll never thirst again. We move on and Jesus is uh, celebrating one of the feast with Israel. And there he is in the middle of this uh, great a uh, number of Israelites who were in Jerusalem celebrating this feast and he lifts up his voice and he begins to scream at the top of his lungs. Hey, if anybody's thirsty, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and let him drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. It's that flow. It's, yes, yes, Jesus. it's water. It's 
coming and getting a drink and becoming. You got to go to the source of the living water. You got to go to the well. It's like the prophet in the Old Testament said, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. That Hebrew word salvation, hallelujah, is transliterated into the English word Jesus. With joy shall you draw water out of the well of Jesus. If you can just get a drink of what Jesus is offering us. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. And so some suggest that when you get the Holy Ghost uh, and you get that living water flow and you become a, a micro well of water yourself. You got Jesus flowing from you. Hallelujah. Amen. You get the Holy Ghost. It's available to everybody. In spite of what you've done, in spite of the mistakes, in spite of the sin. I said it already once, but such were some of us. We've all got a past. Bless God. I, thank God I wasn't that woman at that well. And he wasn't going down my, my list of disqualifiers. Hallelujah. My Lord. Amen. So the Holy Ghost, it's available. If anybody thirsts, yes. all you got to do is come. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And that Holy Ghost is the well yes. without walls. Thank you. Praise Jesus. God. Thank you. So the disciples showed back up and they were concerned that Jesus was speaking to this Samaritan woman. But Jesus used this opportunity to uh, refocus their attention. Not on the wall. But on the well, on the opportunity that, that harvest is close, there is an opportunity for a great harvest. And that opportunity for them at that moment was the Samaritans. And he urged the disciples, you got to get past. You'll see this over and over uh, throughout the course of the Bible. Jesus does this often. You got to you got to push past your ideas uh, about other groups of people, about your your prejudices, about your predispositions about people. You got to get past that stuff. You got to get past the walls yes, yes, yes. in order to get to the harvest. Yes. Hallelujah. And the harvest indeed was in front of them. In fact, Jesus pointed it out. Uh, they, they were looking at the fields. And, and Jesus said, hey, don't say that the harvest is four months away. You're looking out here at the field. And you're saying, hey, we're still several months away from revival. Jesus said, don't say the harvest is four months away. You look. I, what I think he did was I think he refocused. You're looking at the field. But what I want you to do is I want you to look at the field. Uh -huh. And off in the distance were all these people from Samaria coming out to hear what Jesus yes. had to say. Yes. The fields are ready. Yes. It's not a far off revival. Uh -huh. It's not a six month away revival. Uh -huh. It is a right now uh -huh. harvest. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Jesus does this. He he is encouraging his, uh, his disciples. You've got to push past these ideas. They were having a hard time with it. You know, people, uh, if, I could just, if I could be real, you know, people are, are raised. They, they are, uh, they're taught certain things, uh, uh, ideals about segments of the population. And, and this stuff is drilled into people. But Jesus is always, you got to get past that. you gotta, you got to break through those things. You can't survive. With, and the whole idea is what? It's coming together. Yes. Hallelujah. We see it again when Jesus is ascending up into heaven after his resurrection. Once more, he encourages uh, his disciples to be witnesses of him. Yes. Jerusalem, all of Judea, and Samaria. And then he says unto the uttermost part of the world. Yes. Hallelujah. On the day of Pentecost, Peter was preaching that the Spirit... The water, the flow, if you will, was for everybody. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yes. The promise is unto you and to your children and yes. to yes. Yes. 
all them. He didn't even know what he was saying. I don't think he did. I don't think at that moment, he had the Holy Ghost, but I don't think at that moment he fully had his mind wrapped around the concept that this Holy Ghost was forever. Yes. I think I think they still had it in their minds that it was just a Jew thing. Yes. It was just a, a Israelite thing. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. I don't think he had his mind fully wrapped around that, the, the ramifications, what all that uh, uttermost parts of the world really, really meant. Yes. Amen. And it was... Uh, it was long after Pentecost. They they still struggled with these traditions, these ideas that had been planted in them uh, for generations, really. And, and even after Stephen's martyrdom, the church was being scattered. Uh -huh. Persecution. I've talked about it before. That's how God, uh, that's what God had to do to get them out of the walls. Somebody say praise God. I got to get you out from behind these walls that are stopping my gospel from going out and from others coming together in this truth. I got to get you outside of the walls. And you're not going to you're not going to like the means by which I do it. Hallelujah. I don't look forward to what God's going to have to do to the church. Some might say COVID-19. God's getting us out the four walls of the church. Yeah, I mean, that, that preaches, did. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Why don't we pray? Why don't we lift our voices? So God had to scatter them. But when he did, what did they do? They went everywhere preaching the message of Jesus Christ. Pre uh, Philip went down to Samaria and there... Finally, he experienced great breakthrough. And I believe that breakthrough was the harvest that Jesus said was available to them right then and right there. Jesus was sowing the seed at the well that day with a Samaritan woman and, and later the entire community. But it wasn't until later when Philip broke through that wall and great revival was experienced in Samaria. And of course, you know, Peter and John, they confirmed the work by laying hands on the Samaritans. And we're seeing walls uh, that are coming down. And uh, Jesus was showing the disciples that the Samaritans also, mm -hmm. they were all welcome at the same well. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. He's the only well of life. He's the only source of life. Somebody pray, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't we all stand? You know, it's interesting that even, even with the Samaritans um, receiving the Holy Ghost, Peter and John were the ones that went down there and confirmed them, laid hands on them. Uh, they spoke in tongues when they got it. Somebody say praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And, and, that, and that was kind of the order. It was going to start in Jerusalem. It was going to go to Judea, Samaria. But they still couldn't really wrap their minds on what does it mean to go to the uttermost parts of the world. The Gentiles? Surely not. But bless God, Peter one day was up on the rooftop and he was praying. God had to show him three times, Sister Carlos. He just, he didn't get it. He didn't understand it. I so, Lord. I've never ate anything uncommon or unclean. Had to show him three times and then had to tell him, Son, Pay attention, boy. Uh -huh. Three men are knocking on the door right now. Yes. They're looking for you, and you're going to go with them. Uh -huh. And as soon as he walked into Cornelius' house, the Holy Ghost came on him, and he began to preach the word to them. Yes. Yes. And they got the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And guess what happened when they got it? Well, they spoke, in, they tongues. spoke in tongues. Yes. Peter commanded yes. them to yes. be baptized in the name of yes. Jesus. Yes. Because God was showing Peter that this was an all-inclusive church. This was a place, a well, where everybody could come together. Hallelujah. And the church afterwards, I'm, I'm wrapping it up, but the church afterwards, they debated over whether or not Gentiles really could be a part. And, uh, of course, Peter, he became a, uh, a proponent of 
including the Gentiles. God would raise up the Apostle Paul, who would be a strong defender of, of the Gentile church. We see later on, we see in the epistles I referenced earlier, the Ephesians. You see it in the book of Romans. That's primarily what the, the epistle to the Roman church was about. Coming together. It was... It was really about uh, Paul seeing a divided church. We've got this growing, thriving group of Gentiles that are full of the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, hungry for the Word of God. And then you've got this Jewish group of Converted Christians, full of the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. And they're not wanting to come together. Because this group over here thinks this one's legalistic. And this group over here thinks that they just enjoy license and want to live any way they want to. And Paul's saying, hey, we're just one church. We got to we gotta come together at the will. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I was reading about this. This is interesting. Anna Creek, Anna Creek Station. Uh, it's a two million acre ranch, uh, just full of livestock. Livestock everywhere. Just enormous amount of livestock. In fact, they say that uh, if this two million. Two million acre ranch is just slightly larger than the entire nation of Israel altogether. When they uh, they knew that building fences around two million acres, um, it really wasn't practical uh, because of the size of the ranch, uh, but also because of the number of livestock and. And the need for them to have such a large area to graze. The freedom to just be able to go out there and graze. So instead of building a wall to protect them and to keep them in and to keep the predators uh, out. What they did instead was they built a well. Hallelujah. They created a supply of water. Right out there in the open wilderness of the outback. And the animals recognized their need for this source of water. Yeah. And so they never traveled very far yeah. away My from God. their source yeah. of life. My God. They didn't have to build walls. Come on. They just built a well. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on. Let me tell you something. You, you ought to know me by now. You know how I feel about our walls. I feel like we ought to be, a, the church is a separated people. We protect ourselves from the world. But our focus should never be on the wall that we ignore the well. Am I making sense? In other words, we ought not to be so focused on building higher walls that separate us more from the world. What we ought to be doing is build a larger well so that the world will come and get a drink. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. You know me. I believe in holiness. Yes. This, this, when I was going over this and I was praying about this, it, it almost kind of bothered me a little bit because I don't want to be misunderstood. I want to be all the way apostolic. Yes. All the way Pentecostal. I believe in this message. Yes. I believe this life is the best life. Yes. Hallelujah. But I don't want our walls, our standards, you know what I'm saying? Yes. To hinder other people from coming. And and I get, I told you the story before. We had a, a young lady at our, our Pineville Church come and she got the Holy Ghost. I feel like I'm saying too much, but... She came, she got the Holy Ghost, and somebody in the church went to her husband right after she got done praying through and told him, well, 
Your wife got the Holy Ghost. Now you're going to have to teach her how to dress like a lady. Guess what, Sister Eileen? They never came back. I believe she needs to dress like a lady. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you know what? She's thirsty tonight. Yeah. Because she hadn't been back. Amen. Why don't we close our eyes? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe. Hallelujah. That the well that we're drinking from is a well that can satisfy all of LaSalle Parish. I believe this is a well that will never run dry. I believe there's enough. Hallelujah. In the well of Jesus Christ for every man, woman, and child to get full of the Holy Ghost. If any man, if any woman thirst, they have an open invitation to come and drink. And there's no ideas. There's no predispositions. There's no prejudices. Hallelujah. In me or in any of us that ought to stop anybody from coming. I don't care if they come in tattered from head to toe hallelujah they can still live for God I don't care if they come in having made some bad decisions in their past they've got a rap sheet a mile long they can still get filled with the Holy Ghost and make heaven their eternal abode I don't care what you've done my friend you can come to an altar you can get repentance and forgiveness of sin and be full of living water with you leave this church somebody lift up your hands if anybody's thirsty tonight for the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. You can come and get a fresh drink. If anybody feels like they're a little bit parched, a little bit dry tonight, you can come and get a renewal. I know the old timers, they say you get under the, the spout where the glory comes out. Hallelujah. You come and get under the spout and get you a fresh drink of the Holy Ghost tonight. Is anybody thirsty? Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's come and drink. <clears throat> In his presence, there's food in such a A, dis, a disservice. I want to. I want to. I want to do this right. I want to say this right. I believe in who we are, our identity. But I think when we focus more on the wall or the fence that separates us from the world, instead of focusing on the well of life, yes. we're doing ourselves a disservice. Oh, 
Help us, Jesus. You know, we want to be safe. And, and I want I want to be safe. You know, I want this to be a safe church. I don't want our men to have to struggle coming in. Uh, and they look at our, our women, our beautiful women. Uh, you know, but uh, you can't just walk into any church um, without... On the platform, am I right? I believe in all that stuff. But I think too many people are engineered to build bigger walls. Yes, come on, Pastor. And what they're doing is they're building a wall around the well of life and they're preventing people. I don't want to get so focused on that. I believe it, but I don't want that to be my focus. I want my focus to be Jesus. Hallelujah. Because I think the well. Is more critical yeah. than the wall. Yeah. Don't please don't misunderstand me. Please don't misunderstand me. I think this is timely, very very timely, because our our country, our community, our world, um, it's messed up. It's messed up. It's pr- re- harvest is here. It's not four months away. It's now. Um, And as the church, we have an obligation uh, to do something with what we've been given. Our world right now, everybody feels like they have to be involved with a cause. Uh I've got to fight for something. And, um, you know, there's so much tension and division in our world right now. Help us, Jesus. People are building walls and people are choosing sides uh-huh. Help us, and, and they're identifying themselves with groups. Um, and all of this is building up, Sister Eileen, uh, and it's it's boil, it's about to boil over. It's, a, it's about to come to a head, Brother David. And you know what? The world's going to come to you. The world's going to approach you. Somebody on your job's going to come and say, which side are you on? Oh, on. You got to make a decision. Are you for it or against it? Oh, my. Are you with us or are you against us? Come on. You got to choose a side. Don't get involved. Amen. Don't get involved in the petty yeah. prejudices ideals of this world let's just be the church let's just lead people to the well of life hey you looking for a cause join the cause of Christ let's have revival let's let's sow good seed let's have a harvest don't get involved in the petty differences and the things that separate in this world it's it's fixing to get a lot worse. Yes, you, it is. You know what? I, I'm not a doom and gloom kind of guy. I don't want to be. Uh, 2020 was a mess. And I told y'all, what was it, Sunday? I said, 2021 is only, it's going to be what we make it. And, and that there's so much truth to that. Um, but it's going to be what we make it regardless of how messy the year is. Yes. Uh, I'm preaching hope and revival and overcoming and breakthrough and Jesus and all that good stuff through the mess because it's going to be a mess. There's going to (laughs) wars and rumors of wars. Scripture talks about nation rising up against nation. Hallelujah. Ethnicity against ethnicity, if you want to boil it down to what it's really saying. And you're going to have to choose a side. At least that's what the world wants you to do. But we choose Jesus. Yes, we do. And his word says we're coming together. We're joining together. We're not dividing. There's not going to be... Uh, a division in the church. It's not going to be a, a Jew and a Gentile church, two separate churches. It's going to be one church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. Come on, that's it's kind of it's kind of a curveball. It's man, it, bro, Bobby. This thing took took a turn somewhere way back then. But you know what? I think the Holy Ghost is trying to give us a little bit of 
A little bit of warning. He's trying to jump ahead of something and say, you know what? You make up your mind right now that regardless of what is fixing to come down the road. Hallelujah. I'm on the side of Jesus. Amen. Mm. Amen. God help us right now, Lord, to come together in unity more than we ever have before. God help us to focus, God, on the well of life. Hallelujah. Help us, Jesus, to get full of that living water, God. Oh, that we may be, be that we may become little wells of life. That out of our belly can flow that same. Living water, God, that when we're on, on the job, God, people can drink of that living water, God. That when, when we're at school or wherever we're at, God, oh, we can be bubbling over with living water, God, that everybody that's thirsty can drink. Everybody say amen. amen. All right. I love you all. I hope this wasn't so scattered that it just didn't make no sense at all. Y'all greet each other in Jesus' name. Amen. Good to see you, Sister Angela. Love you very much.